Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Radioality GA-5S. Now the guys over at Radioality, they kindly sent this to me to have a play around with. So I'm just gonna kind of cover a few basic specifications and uh, take it out of the box, have a look at the build quality, and then we're gonna go through programming the radio using their software or using the Chirp software. Now it has dual band, it's dual display, dual standby, covers a frequency range of 136 to 174 megs on VHF, and it covers 400 to 520 megahertz on UHF. It also has the commercial FM radio reception available, which covers from 65 to 108 megs. Obviously you can't transmit on those frequencies. It has high, middle and low power settings, which consist of seven watts, four watts and one watt. And you can also have 25 kilohertz bandwidth or 12.5 kilohertz bandwidth perfect if you're going to be talking on simplex or talking through those repeaters that need the narrower band so as you can see here i'm just taking everything out of the box and you get pretty much everything that you're going to need for using this handheld radio the only thing that didn't come with it for me was the programming cable but i do have one already so I'm not sure if uh, when you order one you may need to include one in your purchase or whether it comes with it now the battery just clips on the back the battery is actually an 1800 milliamp hour battery so it should last quite some time the antenna just fits quite nicely onto the top left it just screws in into an SMA connection just turn it clockwise and it's firmly in place now the radio has three buttons on the left hand side we have call ptt and money um, these buttons do various different things obviously apart from the ptt the right hand side of the radio has this little pull out rubber flap which is used for plugging in the programming cable or you can use a speaker mic with it which is quite handy if you just want to tuck away the radio into a pocket now on the top there's a little led and we also have the on off control which also adjusts the volume. The display is quite easy to read, very similar to something like a UV5R and those kind of radios. So the bottom button, press it once, it will turn the LED on, press it again, it will start flashing. Hold the top button in and it will actually sound an alarm, an emergency alarm. Tap it again to turn it off. Now one tap will put it into the commercial radio reception, which is 65 to 108 megs. Uh, it works pretty well just on the standard aerial. The center button is the PTT, as you can see here, I've just keyed up my local repeater and which is probably about three miles away and the reception is quite clear there doesn't seem to be much noise now you have a a and b button which can be used to switch between the two different vfos you can also direct entry a frequency if you know the frequency that you want to use and by pressing the circle button at the top left there that will put it into memory mode so any of the memories that you've programmed into the radio they will be recalled and you can go through using the up and down buttons to change the channel number as you can probably hear there's actually an audible sound that comes from the radio that gives you some voice prompts so if you're a white stick operator this can be very very useful it doesn't seem to read out the channel names but it does give you the channel numbers. Overall, the radio has a quite nice feel in the hand. It doesn't feel as expensive as like Yesu and Icon products, but for the price point this is at, it's a very good radio. We're gonna be taking a look at how to program this radio and also some on-air tests so you can hear what the audio sounds like. Let's go ahead and plug in the programming cable now and we're gonna load up the software and see if we can program it. So there's a couple of different options you've got when it comes to software for programming the 5S. You can either use the software which Radio Oddity provide on their website, or you can go ahead and download the free utility called Chirp. This is quite a widely known piece of software and covers many different radios. It has some extra cool features, so I'm gonna show you this software as this is probably the best software to get you up and running quickly. Now the first thing you need to do is plug the radio in to your computer via the USB cable and plug the other end into the side of the radio as shown before and then turn on your radio. 
Now the cable emulates a serial port, so what we need to do is find out which serial port the cable has emulated. So we'll just go over to our Windows bar, right click and go to Device Manager, go to our COM ports, and assuming you don't have anything else which is creating a virtual serial port, you can see which COM port you are using here. Mine says COM5. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is read from the radio. So I'm gonna go up here to where it says radio, download from radio, and then in the middle here, we've got COM5. I'm gonna, the vendor is Radio Oddity, and the model is GA-5S. When I click OK, it will just come up with some instructions on what you need to do, and then click OK. Now at this point where it says clone progress, this means that it's cloning the memory map from the radio to your computer's memory. Once it's fully received, you can then edit it and send it back. Okay, so that's now finished. And as you can see uh, in my memories, I don't have anything programmed. But what I wanna do is programming some of my local repeaters. Well, this is actually quite easy when it comes to Chirp. So what we need to do is go to radio, query data source I'm going to select repeater book and repeater book proximity query uh, I put in the town where I live select all bands and distance click OK and then another tab will open here which is the results of that search so let's go ahead and program in some of these repeaters into the memory tab for the radio once you've found the repeater that you need, just right mouse click, click copy, back over to here, right mouse click, paste. Just make sure that the offset is correct. You can here also here change the power if you wish to change the power output for this particular memory. So there we go, I've got a couple of repeaters now programmed in for my GA5S. Now there are some other settings that you can make to the radio within the software as well. Over here on the left it says Memories Settings Browser. If we click on the Settings tab you can see here we have some basic settings for Carrier Squelch, we've got some Battery Saver Options, Backlight Timer, we can turn on and off the beep and we can also change the colour of the LCD at different states. So for example, the standby LED color is currently set to purple. The receive RX LED color is blue. And then when you're transmitting, you've got orange. There are lots of other settings here. For example, we can enable dual watch. We can also set up Vox. And we've also can enable or disable the broadcast FM radio. So if you didn't want to use the radio for listening to commercial radio, you can disable it here. Okay, so that was showing you how to copy from the results from repeater book. Let's have a look at programming a channel manually. It's quite easy, just go to the channel that you want to, you click on it, and we're gonna put in 145.500, which is actually the two meter, I'm gonna call this two meter calling. I don't need any tone. I don't need any duplex. Don't need any shift. And I'll we'll leave the power on high. Okay, so what you can do if you wish to, you can save this file. That saves it locally so you can recall it at a later stage. And then now I'm gonna download it back to the radio. So I select radio upload to radio make sure that you've got the correct com port set you won't be able to change vendor or model because you've already pulled back that image format click ok and then click ok again now at this point this is where the radio led on the front will start blinking which means it's receiving data and you'll see here the cloning progress bar will start to go up now when it reaches the end, that means that it's finished and the radio would normally reboot. So keep an eye on your radio. Okay, so mine has just finished restarting. Not only that, but we... And somebody is on GB3AL. You work so many people. I mean, I know them like yourself, the regular ones and that. 
Okay, so let's do a little audio test just to see what the GA5S sounds like when it's being received. I'm just going to use my SDR Uno SDR software and I'm going to go and stand downstairs and talk through the GA5S radio through RF. So this is what it sounds like. This is M0DQW, Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec Whiskey, checking and testing the radio oddity GA-5S on 2 meter simplex. This is a dual band, dual display, dual standby VHF and UHF handheld radio. And this is what the audio quality sounds like. Well, there you go, guys. That's the Radio Oddity GA-5S handheld transceiver. If you have any questions about this radio, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. I'll also leave links to the software and also links of where you can go and purchase this radio if you find it of use to you. Until the next video, guys, take care, and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah.